Hello, I'm Zach Kitsan, and I'm an editor at Worn and Wound, and today we're going to be looking at a couple of chronographs that I have in my personal collection uh, that I think are kind of interesting to compare and contrast. Uh, I am not a chronograph guy, but somehow in the last year or so I've found myself in possession of these uh, pretty interesting and I think kind of unusual chronographs, and it's sort of made me rethink how I feel about the complication and what it is that draws me to these watches in the first place. So let's get started. This is the IWC Pilot Chronograph 41 in Ceritanium. And this is a watch that I've talked about quite a bit on the podcast, and I post it on Instagram all the time. And it's a watch that I've really become very fond of uh, over the course of the last, uh, I guess, seven or eight months since I took delivery of it. And it was somewhat of a surprise to me when I first saw the medal. I got the press release for this watch actually about a year ago, as we sit here now, ahead of Watches and Wonders. And I initially kind of brushed it off because it looked kind of just like a murdered out all black chronograph from the IWC press release. And that's not really something that is all that appealing to me personally. But then I was lucky enough to see it uh, in the metal at the show a few weeks later. And what really struck me was how much contrast there actually is in the dial. The case and base dial are this kind of like gray color. It's not black at all. Um, it's more of like a pewter tone and it's contrasted with numerals and hands that are actually very legible and veer towards like almost like a white or beige color when contrasted against the dial and it makes it really quite easy to read and I just kind of fell in love with the size and weight of the watch is like really perfect on my wrist and the dial has this you know really interesting contrast to it uh, that I just immediately enjoyed. I don't use this watch to time anything. A, uh, like I said I'm not a chronograph person by nature, but I love the way that the watch is balanced uh, with these subdials, and I find it extremely legible and easy to wear, and it's really become, you know, one of my favorite day-to-day -day pieces, even though it wasn't something that I initially thought uh, would be of interest to me at all. So it just goes to show you that, you know, being open-minded and, you know, being willing to kind of like see things for what they are is really important uh, in, in watches, because if you had asked me a year ago if I'd be rocking a Ceritanium IWC chronograph every day as my as my daily wear. I never would have uh, believed you, but it's become a watch that I've really come to enjoy a lot. And the chronograph functionality is almost incidental, but it, it adds to the aesthetic appeal of the watch in sort of this intangible way that uh, is, uh, I find, very rewarding uh, and enjoyable. Next up is a very different kind of chronograph. This is the uh, Corono Tokyo Chronograph 2, nicknamed the Shiro. And this is a chronograph that I've also had for about a year or so, and it couldn't be more different from the IWC. This is a much dressier style of chronograph. Case is smaller, it's about 38 millimeters compared to the IWC's 41. It's highly polished all around, and the dial is uh, where the IWC is very simple and straightforward. You'd almost call the Corono fussy and complicated by comparison. It's honestly quite difficult to read. Uh, the hands are, you know, at a glance, almost the same length and highly polished and can easily get lost in, you know, various lighting conditions. It's not as legible as I'd normally like a watch to be. Uh, usually that would be a total deal breaker for me. But the dial is just insanely gorgeous. And it took me a lot of warm up to it. But after a period of time wearing the watch and looking at it under magnification, I really got to appreciate some of the finer details. This watch uses a, uh, it has a, a lacquer coating that's unlike anything I've seen on a watch, uh, at least at this price point. There's a level of depth that you can see in the, in the lacquer that is just really impressive and really rewarding. It appears that a lot of the text is actually sitting on multiple levels of the lacquer. So it almost appears to cast a shadow uh, when, you, when you view it through a, through, a, through a loop or through magnification. And again, this is not something that you can see with the naked eye, but to know that it's there is actually really cool and really satisfying. And uh, I can forgive the watch a lot of its legibility shortcomings, which I've, I've gotten used to. I can, you know, it's not unreadable by any means. It's just not like the hyper legible watch that I would normally, you know, gravitate towards but it's uh it's an incredibly satisfying watch to own because of those smaller details and 
again, similar to the IWC, I never use the chronograph functionality because it has scales that are too small to read with the, at least my human eyes, which are rapidly aging and uh, getting worse by the year. So this style has a telemeter scale and a pulsation scale, which are basically impossible to see with the naked eye, but you can very easily see them under magnification and just kind of knowing that they're there is really satisfying and understanding that the craftsmanship and detail that Corona put into this watch that's sort of hidden from view most of the time, I find that to be really appealing uh, and enjoyable. And even though I never use the chronograph to time anything, I'm, I'm again, not a chronograph person. It's that it's the fact that it's a chronograph that allows that detail to be there. You have to have, you know, all these scales to kind of like, you know, for Corona to, to flex that they're able to, to do this level of printing uh, with that level of, of accuracy and, and detail. So the dial has a busyness to it that's uncommon in most of the watches that I own, um, but I find really appealing. It's quite rewarding uh, on a day-to-day -day basis when I, when I choose to wear it. So I've had this kind of infatuation with these two chronographs, uh, even though I still tend to, uh, you know, at least in my head, I, I think I prefer simpler time only or time and date watches. But these two chronographs in particular have really kind of like opened my eyes over the last couple of years with the aesthetic possibilities uh, of chronographs. And they couldn't be more different, but they have these elements to them that draw me in. And it's just one of the many kind of fascinating things about this hobby is that you just never really know what it is about a watch that's going to uh, that's going to obsess you and make you you know really kind of enjoy a watch long term. And uh, right now, I'm really enjoying these chronographs, even though I'm not a chronograph guy in the least. So that's this installment of Inside the Collection. Come back again, and we'll be sharing more watches from our personal collections very soon. Thanks.